What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod and Wiss, son of a tech, once again, and today we're going to take a look at three graphics cards between $150 and $200 and see how they perform in the latest AAA title available, Dead Rising 4. Stick around. So first things first, we do need to clarify that even though this game is only purchasable through UWP or the Universal Windows platform, that does not mean that it's DirectX 12. This game is actually DirectX 11 and I wanted to get that cleared up before we get started. Another couple details that you guys might be interested in is the test bench, which is going to be an i7-3770K made it to an Asus P8Z77 motherboard with 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM and and it is all running on a PNY 500 gigabyte solid state drive. And that is all being powered, of course because it needs power by a Corsair AX860i. If you guys are interested in the actual benchmark run itself and the steps and where I'm doing that in the game, check out the video for the same benchmark uh, between the RX 480 and the GTX 1066 gigabyte. So be sure to check that out if you haven't yet. Settings, however, are gonna be a little bit different than the previous benchmark or performance video we did with the RX 480 and GTX 1060 in that we're going to be doing only 1080p benchmarks but we're going to be looking at three different presets so the presets are going to be just the medium settings the high settings and the very high settings and hopefully the reason I always want to do three different sets of settings either whether that be resolution or actual game settings is because then we can start to see different flaws and how the cards handle changes within the settings themselves and then be able to draw some conclusions from that the three cards we're going to be testing is going to be the sapphire rx 474 gigabyte in its reference cooler design kind of framework and then the other two cards actually aren't reference designs but they're going to be the asus gtx 1050 ti and that's going to be four gigabytes of video memory and then we actually it is kind of a reference design it is going to be the smaller with a single fan it's going to be the evga gtx 1063 gigabyte so i think these are some really cool cards and we'll be able to see some interesting stuff and maybe hope Hopefully, hopefully, you guys will be able to decide on which one you prefer to purchase or pick up. If you do decide to pick up one of these cards, please use one of the Amazon affiliate links in the description below so I can get a kickback. So starting out with medium settings at 1080p, we see that the 1050 Ti had a minimum FPS of 39 with an average of 49.5 and a max of 62.9. So very playable right off the get go. We know that we can buy a budget card and go ahead and jump in at albeit at, at medium settings, but we can still play the game, which is nice to know. Bumping up from that though, we see that the RX 474 gigabyte had a minimum FPS of 47.9 with an average of 65.4 and a max of 83.5. Finally, rounding things out, we have the GTX 1063 gigabyte with a minimum FPS of 53.3, an average of 71.5, and a max of 88.8. Bumping settings up to high, the 1050 Ti had a minimum FPS of 33.5 with an average of 40.8 and a max of 47.3, while the RX 470 had a minimum of 46 FPS with an average of 60.8 and a max of 75.8. Now that comes very, very close to the almost $20 more Delta or whatever of the GTX 1063 gigabyte, which had a minimum FPS of 46. 6.6 with an average of 60.60.1. Wow, I almost messed up there. Actually, I did. And a max of 78.2. Finally, the big daddy of this is going to be the very high settings, which is going to turn a lot of stuff up that I don't even play with on most of the time. To be honest with you, I would 
stick around the high settings at max if I ever do play this game, but we need to see what we're working with here. On the 1050 Ti, we managed to stay above 30 FPS, which is super impressive and actually is pretty cool because that means you're getting console performance at 1080p for what is effectively probably around console price, but we had a minimum of 31.1 with an average of 35.3 and a max of 41. Moving on over to the RX 470, we had a minimum of 38.8 with an average of 51.8 and a max of 69. <laughs> And finally, to wrap things up, the GTX 1063 gigabyte had a minimum FPS of 43.1 with an average of 53.3 and a max of 68.3. So, what conclusions can we draw from this? Well, obviously, if you're going to be closer to the $150 point and you just can't stretch your budget, the 1050 Ti is is going to be a decent option and you aren't going to be left out in the cold not being able to play the latest AAA title. That being said, it's not that much more, about $15, to bump up to the RX 470 which provides a much better experience. But where does that leave the GTX 1060? If you guys started to notice as we started bumping up settings, that 3 gigabytes obviously to me I think is what it is, started limiting the ability of the GTX 1063 gigabyte with that amount of RAM. And we started to see the RX 470 catch up to it. And I found that very, very interesting. With that being said though, because of the medium settings and the GTX 1063 gigabyte being a lot closer to that 60 FPS, I felt the my best gaming experience over playing on all three of these cards was medium settings on the GTX. GTX 1063 gigabyte. Now that's without free sync or G sync or fast sync. That being said, if we have all of those options at our disposal, free sync pretty much wipes out any difference between the RX 470 and the GTX 1063 gigabyte on even medium settings and then just starts making it beautiful once you start bumping up those settings to high because you start having a free sync range of between 40 and 60 and you're not you're not going too far above or below those and it just makes it super smooth and playable however the GTX 1063 gigabyte if you use Nvidia's fast sync and don't even have to invest in G-Sync you'll cut all the frames off the top of the 60 FPS and you end up getting a better response time between your controls and what you're seeing or what's translating on the screen. So there's that benefit for NVIDIA there. As far as G-Sync goes, I don't think it's practical to purchase a G-Sync monitor when you're looking at cards within this price range. So I think that that just is, is discounted in my opinion all the way and shouldn't be uh, considered when, you, when you're looking at this price range of graphics cards. So I hope that cleared some things up for you guys. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to let me know what you think in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as well and ding that fucking button. And until next time, I will see you next Tuesday.